Good evening, everybody, and thank you for being here. Welcome to the Village of Trustees meeting for Tuesday, February 11th. Please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank
Are there any questions on capital? Yeah, uh, Sarah, it's a sort of related question. I, and you may not be able to answer. The, it, the Lamoille is a two, is that, there's also another piece to that. Is there gonna be a, a repair of Lamoille Street? Is that happening mm -hmm. next year? I don't know about the timeline thing, but it'll be a water line replacement and a repair of the right. street, which is why you see it in both the water capital fund okay. and the capital okay. reserve okay. fund. So yes, did we did that. the engineering this year. We are doing the water line and the street next year. Any other updates from the capital committee? Well, what? That? Sorry. Any other updates on that from the capital committee or? No. no. Uh, we had two new members and they jumped in and uh, we had to do, we did a reorganization of the, um, oh, I just meant the about Lamoille. Yeah. 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 And and about and Lamoille. Nothing yeah. changed but in Lamoille. Lamoille Still on Lamoille. Track. I did want to point out uh, the slide that's shown on the screen right now, which is a pie graph. Oh, I did it again this year. <laughs> I didn't use, do the colors right so you can see it. But um, <laughs> told me something. It's kind of like a cold one. No. This is a pie chart of the segments of your taxes if you are a resident in the village in the current year. And what this shows is that the school tax rate is 64% of your total tax bill, the town taxes are 22%, and the village taxes are 14%. Um, I forgot to mention back here that we expect that this budget will increase the taxes on the average village home by about $20. All right, I'd be happy to take any questions. I feel like we've got a little bit of the inside track here with how much time has been spent on this at the right. trustee yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe for the viewers at right. home, this process starts months back. There are There's a day-long meeting with the board and the department heads. Then there's more deliberation, more questions, more answers, and then a final. So if you're not hearing much right now, it's because it's been <laughs> covered ground right. over the last two months. And the intent of this budget is to not change anything. It is not to provide a new service. It is not to cut a service. It is to provide the exact same level of services we've enjoyed and had in this community for many years prior. That's correct. There are no new positions um, proposed. There are no new um, efforts of sharing or consolidation <laughs> with the town. We're continuing the budget initiatives from the prior year. This will be the first full year of recreation. Um, co-location, but really this is just the next year in the plan of status quo. That's all I got. All right. Anybody have any other questions? Nope, I'm good. Nope. Is that it for the... That's it for my presentation. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions from anybody in the, the public on the, the budget or what has been presented or not been presented? <laughs> I have all the other details here. I'll just add that I, I, I appreciate all the effort that you put into this, Sarah, and I know we, we had some great adjustments. I think we made some good compromises, so I, I have to say I'm pretty good mm -hmm. with the way this has come out. As am I. Just like to take a moment, thank all the department heads and all the other staff yep. that mm -hmm. work on this, answer <coughs> questions, get things, run it to ground. Uh, sharpen their pencils, um, including Brad who's here tonight in the yep. back row, um, working on, you know, trying to keep the community as a, you know, a premier livable place uh, for business and for our residents. So the only thing that I want to mention, I've mentioned at other previous budget sessions um, with regards to uh, the EJRP Capital Fund, uh, I just want to again bring up my concern around the electronic sign, not around the concept of the village having an electronic sign, simply around the placement of the electronic sign, in that if the overall goal is to inform as many people as possible about recreation, then why would we limit it to one-fifth of the number of cars that go through our community instead of bringing it into five corners, where we then have all five-fifths being able to see that. According to the CCRPC's uh, scoping study of the Crescent Connector, uh, during the uh, morning peak traffic, 700 cars go by Maple Street. Approximately 2,500, 2,700 go through Five Corners. 
So we're excluding about over 2,000 people from being able to read that message by putting it in front of Maple Street Park, as opposed to bringing it here at Five Corners. So I, again, with how much time the board had spent in trying to whittle down the, the budget, why would we expend the money to not reach its fullest potential? So that is my concern. Appreciate it. Good points. I guess I agree with that. Um, I don't know if we need to do anything here. It's a process that's going to play out. So we have this public hearing. We have a public hearing at our next meeting. At that time, do we? Don't we? No. We don't? I thought we had two public I hearings. We, have to... we definitely do two for water rates because of our policy. Do we do two for the budget as well? I was only planning to do one because I'm going to be in Florida after oh. next week. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so. But I can definitely look first thing in the morning and verify unless we need to do something about that. So I say that in that we are not, I was wrong, we are adopting the budget yeah. and capital budget later. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'd, I'd observe too, yep. Andrew, that we had all day budget session. Yep. We've had two other meetings where we've altered the budget. Um, it's not as if we haven't yep. interacted yeah. with the public and been available right. and transparent yeah. about it. So I don't really, you know, even if we weren't going to approve it tonight, I wouldn't have a problem. No, I think that that's fine, and we can again. The, this was the public hearing. We're not. Yeah. We're going right. to bring the budget back up again later on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So again, before I close the public hearing, any comments from the public on the budget? Okay. Seeing none. Hearing none. I will go ahead and close the public hearing for the budget capital program budget. Thank you all. Which will bring us to business item six uh, A, a presentation on hometown heroes banner program. Um, and uh, I apologize, is, Lana, are you? Great, yeah. thank you for being here. Yeah. Um, as you feel free to come on up to the chairs that are up here. <coughs> uh, and as you make your way up, in terms of an introduction to this, I'll try to do my best. Um, Lana and I exchanged a, a couple of phone calls, a few emails as this, uh, as you brought to my attention, the potential of uh, this hometown heroes banner program that exists in other communities wanted to understand how it uh, could happen here in Essex Junction. Um, and so I turn it over to you to talk more about uh, what we have. So I appreciate that. And um, who, who is Lena Knight and why is she sitting here? <laughs> the last time I was here, this used to be the police department, so I'm glad to say I'm not here in that capacity anymore. <laughs> I don't know why I was ever there before. I won't bring that up, Mr. Kinsley. <laughs> Um, so, born and raised in Essex Junction, okay, so I grew up here, my parents were very involved in the um, school board more than the town board, or village board, I apologize, I, I live in a small Peru town, so I, I use the word town, I mean village, I apologize. Also, when we go through this tonight, I'm going to use some incorrect verbiage, probably with the military, because I was never in the military, so I apologize ahead of time if... I'm misclassifying something, but I hope you get my attention because I'm just a lame person here. My, uh, my quick biography, uh, 30 second synopsis. I was born here. Uh, as I said, I was, I was, our first house was an orchard, well, Cascadnac, but then Orchard Terrace, and then we went to the cul-de-sac part of, of Orchard Terrace. So we've had well-established roots here. I went to uh, Hiawatha. Uh, we were just passing some of the street. I'm like, why didn't I go to some that? I mm -hmm. Then I went to Fleming for my fifth grade year when it was just the, the fifth graders there. I went to ADL. I actually met Mr. Lawton, and that's when I found out that like something could be named after someone who's still alive. That was really interesting for me. And I did actually graduate with Pro Meridale from Essex Junction High School. So I was a class of 1983. I um, wanted to show you my husband George Knight because 31 years ago today, we were married on uh, St. Lawrence Church and West Street. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Uh, my husband, this, this is his big so anniversary great. evening out. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, McDonald's and then what? <laughs> it's very different. Yeah, like so 
I know I'm too young to be married that long. I get that too. Right? <laughs> I knew you were thinking that. You just said that. So I do appreciate Evan. I do appreciate Andrew. And I know Sammy's also been in my emails. I do appreciate that. Um, what happened is I have moved over. My husband had been taking the ferry. We lived here. Our first house was in Milton when we, after we got married had, and had um, a child. And uh, when I stayed home with her, he said, you know, can we just move over there because I'm taking this ferry and I'm losing all this family time. And yeah, sure. So we established ourselves over in Blackbird, New York. And so that's where we um, had a second child and raised them. And uh, my daughter actually went to St. Michael's College, of course, because go. <laughs> so um, we have a lot of background here. We keep coming back here. We keep coming back here. My father, for years and years and years, organized the Memorial Day Parade. And when Andrew was talking about, oh, oh my gosh, we have a Memorial Day Parade, I'm like, tell me. <laughs> I kept finding reasons not to march in it, and he kept finding reasons to try and get me to. So, uh, but but what struck me is I come from a, a little poorer section over in in New York. There's um, a stable forks, there's Keysville, there's Peru's not bad, Plattsburgh, there's some smaller towns there, let's just say that may not have the budget that other <clears throat> towns have, okay? Ticonderoga, maybe. Very historic, very beautiful, very nice people. They have this program where you drive down the road, and, and I'm sure you've seen it all over the country too, visiting, but um, you might not be aware of it until someone points it out. And you look up and you see, on the telephone poles, you see banners of service people. And the people that are on those banners, some have passed and some are still with us. Uh, and so my thought was, you know, it makes absolutely no sense that with this grounding of Camp Johnson, the Vermont Military Academy, as a junior ROTC for five years, I mean, what Essex Junction does not honor their veterans? And that made no sense. My father brought the moving wall from Vietnam twice here at $10,000 expense, he fundraised and had that brought here. And uh, the, I remember reading the names, my husband got re uh, roped into reading the names and stuff. I say roped is our great pleasure, a great honor. But, you know, it's amazing to me how many um, families, that something like war and, and keeping your country safe affect, it affects everybody. Everybody here in this room knows somebody, somehow. Those affected by it. So, my point is that um, there's a program called Hometown Heroes Banner Program, and that's literally those pennants that are hung on those well, on those telephone poles. And that's really what my hope here is. I got in touch with the company. There's several different companies. I tried to find the most reasonable. I tried to find the one that would be the most bang for your buck, to put it bluntly, because you can do it for as little as $40 or you could do it for $400. So and there was such a big disparaging difference. I tried to find out what the differences were. Why would why would you buy this one instead of this one, whatever. Um, my father did end up, he was stationed at Camp Johnson, did end up running the Vermont Military Academy. My oldest brother, Michael, went to the Air Force Academy and was a, a pilot and then was a navigator there. Joseph went on to West Point and then he served over you know, Germany. My, my punk kid sister, I call her punk kid sister, seven years younger than me, retired a major. I mean, everybody in my family except me, you know. I just was not that honorable. And George, when I met George, had already been in, because he's older than me by a bit, uh, he had been in and out of the Air Force and was in the guards. And I was like, wait, who are you? Tall, dark, and your last name is so easy. I'm going to tell everyone years later. <laughs> so, because Benevento is not the easiest name. So, anyway, that's my history here. So, what I have to say about the Banner Pound program, and we'll get on to the Banner program. The company I was looking at and dealing with back and forth is this uh, man named Rick Schneider. His, his company is Riley Outdoors, okay? And they do banners for just about anything that you want. Like grand openings, blah, 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 anything. Any kind of banner, any kind of promotional thing that you want. You want to promote the Essex Junction Exposition, yeah, we can do that. This is particularly their Hometown uh, Heroes program, and there's many different versions of it. And what I've managed to bring down, I've sent ahead, and I'm not sure if you're looking at what I might have, because I don't... I do see it. Yeah, that does look like my work now that I look at it. Yep, I've got a the, couple the pictures here. Okay, thank you. So, um, so I really want to say just several things, just quick bullet points, and then we can kind of go through that really quickly, okay? Because this does not need to be dramatic. It sh it should be already be done. I know that. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you the banner that I, and this is not 
I'm, I know I sound like I'm jumping ahead, but I don't want this to proceed until I've mentioned a couple of points. I guess that's what I mean to say, okay? So there's some points that I really feel about this particular uh, banner to make banner program to make it successful and stand out um, that I really want to put my foot down on if I have any choice to. This is a sample banner right here, and I don't know who needs to see it, but it literally um, sorry about that. It literally has the service person, it has their name, has their branch of service, and it says, um, yes, actually, we thank you for your service. Okay? That's vastly different than another choice that you could make. Some, uh, quite a few of them say, oh, a village of Essex Junction, um, blah, 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 and then it'll tell a name, rank, social security, blah, 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 it tells you everything. Other people have sponsors and this kind of thing. One of the things I really liked was up here you could have hometown heroes, written up here, hometown heroes. Okay, so that was one of my big points was that we're doing this not to promote the village, we're doing this to promote the service people and what their, their contributions. So I would hope it would say hometown heroes at the top of the banner. Um, it should have the service person's name and branch of service only. No rank, no awards, and no dates. Uh, I ran into the situation where I, I was reading a story and this lady said every time she went by the banner where her young son was hanging, she'd always cry, but not in a good way. She felt very dishonored. And I asked you know, myself, why would she feel dishonored? Like, this is important. And it's because he died at 19 and only achieved the rank of SP, mm -hmm. I don't know what, okay, but not a very high rank that a 19 year old would have achieved. The very next banner you come to was, you know, Colonel blah, 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 with four purple hearts and two, you know, ribbons of, and I'm not diminishing from the Colonel's achievements, but this woman said, my son, that could have been him. Right. He signed on the line the same exact way that the Colonel did, you know? He just was taken before his time, and she felt really struck by that. And so that stayed with me, and I just wanted to bring that point up when we're trying to decide, if you do decide to move forward with this, some things to consider. Um, the portrait of the, the soldier in uniform is beautiful. That's what we're doing here. That's what we're doing here. I don't need names. I don't need rank. I don't understand it anyway. And it's a big cluster where I'm trying to drive quickly down a road, and I only have a fraction of a second to take my eyes off the road and look up and glance and go, oh, oh, I don't want to read his biography. If I do, I can pull over, put on my blinker, safely pull over, write down the person's name, and look into it later. But all I really want to say is, oh, gee, James Johnson, he was in the Army. I recognize James. I went to school with him. He graduated in my year. Or maybe he's my friend's son, you know, that I blah, 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 blah. And this is the most important. We thank you for your service because so many of them, um, I'm going to bring you some pricing, and so many of them talk about where you can have a sponsorship type of thing where you, if you can't pay for it yourself, the veteran can't pay, the veteran's family can't pay, whatever. I have a, uh, an alternative to that. And what they do is they put their names there. And so a few of the towns I've gone through, like Placid and several other places in New York, and it turns me off because you're just promoting the business. You're not mm -hmm. promoting what we're here for. Where our focus should remain on the, the service person, the veteran, whether they're alive or not, um, either way. The focus should remain on them and not say, you know, you know, uh, Lowe's Home Improvement, you know, or whatever. I can say that because that's where I work. So, um, I really feel that the focus should be honoring the military personnel and not the promotion of the village or of our sponsors. So having said that, I will kind of be quiet about my opinion. As to the banners themselves, they come in many different sizes. The one I have kind of brought it down to is a 30 by 60, which is like two and a half by five feet. It runs roughly $200 for a two year lifespan on these banners. They come with wind cuts in them, that's shipping and handling, that's hardware, that's absolutely everything you can think about, including tax. Okay, that's a 200 Alvador, it stays up for two years, if you if the village wants it for two years, okay? It can go less, but they are fully cover, colored on both sides, so no matter what angle you're coming from, it's front and back, okay? 
Also, um, one thing you can do is say you decide to adopt this for Memorial Day and you include it in part of your parade. When you decommission some after a couple, the first couple of years have come down, you decommission them at the beginning of one of these board meetings. You call the families in and you, you hand them their banners, you know, and it can be very quick, very quiet, but it can be very personal and important to a lot of these people. So it's another one additional way of really honoring them by just saying, you know, thank you. So it's like, oh, here, come, come get your banner. It's down at, you know, mm -hmm. we left it at the Brown Island Library for you to pick up when you want. Um, so I really think that I haven't done this research. I can't see any of the pitfalls. So I started digging in where there's got to be pitfalls. There's got to be pitfalls. The only sticking point I could really find is two things. One, who wants to do the labor of putting them up? Okay, because that's not included in the price. So I don't know. It, it, like my little town of, of Peru, New York, our people do it. But you're talking about 30 banners, something like that. Uh, maybe you're talking about 30 banners here. I don't know. I know I alone could buy five of them. And I brought the old checkbooks to make sure I could buy the first one if you do to adopt it. But, uh, so that's the thing. who's going to install them. And they do have an installation program, so they will come. It's called the White Glove Program. They will come, the banner makers will come, install it, do everything. And that's an additional charge, which I did not factor in. Okay, so we can look into that if that's something you need to have happen. But I did not. So that's a sticking point is who's going to actually put them up. There's really no maintenance to it other than if you have a nasty hurricane you wish. It can go up to about 78 miles an hour winds before you have to repair anything. They're on the metal ones and not on the wooden rods. And so it really takes a lot to get those things to go down. The colors don't fade. We use, they use really good pigment. I made sure of it. The cuts get, get cut right in there. Uh, the second thing is that would be a, a little bit of a drawback or a sticky, sticky wicket for people would be where are you going to place them? Who gets that place? Who, I want that telephone pole. I want that telephone pole. So where we drive through, there's this very well-known man, and this family is very, very well-known in Keysville. They're, like you say their name, and 10 roads have been named after them. His is right in front of his store that he ran, George Arnold's store. And you look up and you're like, oh, Mr. Arnold, you know? And there's his store, and there's his whatever, whatever. I don't know. It gets really tricky there. That's the most conversation I see about these things is how do you do it. So like quite a few have adopted a lottery system. So first come, first serve is one way, and that increases your chances of people wanting to sign up quicker because they don't want to wait and lose that spot. But again, it comes up again in two years, okay? So if I have a spot on a pole for my dad, let's just say, and I really liked it, I'm gonna renew it for another two years and buy a brand new replacement banner, mm -hmm. okay? So every year, they're not allowed to fade. You don't have the same one eight years running. Every two years, that must be replaced. You can run the same picture, of course, run the same verbiage, that whole thing. But the banners themselves say crisp, nice, clean, all everybody all in a row across the board, okay? So that they don't turn pink and light purple and everybody else has that really bright blue and red. So so as far as that you'd have to figure out if you want to do the lottery system where you just draw names out of a hat, if you if you don't mind honoring people and putting it in front of a, a well known establishment, I don't know. But I'm just gonna tell you that's what I, I saw, okay? And that's for your committee or whoever to decide. Um, this is open to any active military, honorably discharged veterans, uh, killed in action, pal uh, I'm sorry, prisoner of war, missing in action. It chokes me up to think about this. It's terrible. And you must have established roots in Essex Junction, okay, obviously. That's why it's the hometown. The purpose is to, um, regardless of rank and awards achieved. So that's why I, again, I'm going to reiterate, just name, name of branch of service is so plenty you don't understand. It's just very important, especially after that woman said that. You do not have to take this on yourself as a village board. You can certainly have uh, American Legion involved in this. You can have the veterans of foreign war. I know that's how my father got quite a bit of the moving wall support, you know. And and there's so many people that would want in on this if they only knew about it, you know. We have some powerful people that are aging and they're in these clubs, right? And they just still have so much life left to do. They want a project. They want something that's going to, oh my gosh, you know, or 
honor their buddies or, you know, there's just people that have a lot of passion behind us. So it doesn't have to take away from you and add, be an extra burden for us. That's what I mean. It's not necessarily a burden for us. It's, you know, okay, thank you. I hammered that one. Okay. Um, also, I do believe the verbiage should be identical from one banner to the next. You have the flexibility of it not being, but I've seen photographs just based off my own personal opinion. Seen photographs and it just is so chaotic you don't even get the cohesion that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So in my mind it's not even an option to do it where yes. one it, one is done like you know this one and then one is done like this and then one's done like this. You really should adopt one main, main banner and stick to that um, in my opinion. But again, that's just that. Um, you must order at least 10 banners. Uh, measurements are in inches so as I said, it's 30 by 60 is the one I particularly like. I think it's good, nice and visible. It's sturdy. It was everything you wanted. Anything smaller, then you, you're not, it's kind of pointless because then they get too small and you can't, like, the size of a map, and you're like, what, what's that? You know, you're in a car. You're driving. You have a brief period of second to look at it, so. Um, they're, like I said, they're, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm having quite a bit of this, good for me. Is almost done with me. Um, another thing is, is is the pricing. So I want to get back to the pricing a bit before we go too far. Um, you can you should only display one service person at a time. Meaning, let's use the ad. You know, we don't want dad on this poll and this poll and this poll by by five different family members. Okay, so really, if Vincent Benevento is going to be on there. Let's just have Vincent Benevento be on there one time, and then, you know, another service person on the next poll, another service person, because it's not a popularity contest. We're not here to do that. We're not here to say, oh, he's so beloved. They're all beloved, and they're all cherished, and some of them don't have families to carry this on for them. So when I was doing my pricing, the way I worked my pricing was that there's four ways to purchase one. One is you purchase by the veteran and or the veteran's family member. Okay? The second one is you, you purchase it for a specific veteran. So say maybe I had nobody in the service, but I just, I've always loved my neighbor, and I think Bill Smith would be fabulous, you know, on a pole. That'd be great. So I could buy one in my neighbor's <coughs> house. Okay? The third of them is there can be strictly just people that have a little bit of extra money, and they like to give to the Humane Society, and they like to give to the Sims Society, and of course, I even give to the Vermont Food Bank. Ask my sister. <laughs> no getting out of there alive with her. So, you know, she, she rides the bike, does the 140 mile bike ride every year or whatever. So, um, so there are people that will give, even if they don't have a direct connection, is my point, okay? Hopefully I said that correctly. And the third one is you can purchase one for a specific veteran, but add the additional $50 donation. Okay, so 30 by 60 banner is 110. Metal pole with mounting and hardware is 79. Wind cuts are five dollars and should be in handling equal two hundred dollars. A 30 by 60 banner, metal pole, hardware, hardware plus a fifty dollar donation is two hundred and fifty dollars. The fifty dollars would go into a fund for people that are not sponsored. And so my fifty dollars your fifty dollars your fifty dollars your fifty dollars sponsors another banner. So I, uh, I asked around a little bit to get a feel of, does the 200 mark sound like it's reasonable? And I can tell you, the communities around me are not rolling in dough, and they thought it was beautiful for a two-year period. Mm -hmm. Quite a few of them, I was a little bit shocked to find out, quite a few, uh, put it in there, and then they only allow them to go from Met Memorial Day to Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. And then they take them down. And they and they still charge the two hundred dollars. So I was like, why? I mean, are there that many veterans that you or, or service people or whatever missing in actions that you want to cover? Like in you just need to rotate them more? And they were just like, no, they just didn't hold up. So they just didn't choose correctly. So so they'll and and they don't they don't keep them up year round. You know, they want their Christmas decorations and okay, I get that too. That might be something you want to think about too. I don't know. I, we personally are able to accommodate both of them. It's, it's not an issue. Oh, telephone poles quite tell. So it's not an issue where we are. But for some people, um, you know, $200 to have it for a few months might be a little tight. I mean, I'd be like, oh, okay. But 
you know, but to have a two-year thing is a beautiful, mm -hmm. was a beautiful thought. And I do really like the idea of how one person used the word they decommissioned the banners. To me, that was really, right. mm -hmm. that was beautiful. Yep. Beautiful words. Well, that's not my words. That's somebody else's. They really liked it. Only two things are involved in being developed. One would be an information sheet for the public, and you would just literally outline everything you wanted to on the information sheet itself. Um, as far as, you know, the requirements, what the cost would be, that kind of thing. And the third and second thing is an actual application. So there's just two things. There's the brochure and there's the actual application, okay? And then whoever, uh, most of them, it just says make checks, pay, this one, for example, happens to be Plattsburgh, New York. Uh, make checks payable to the town of Plattsburgh at such and such a place, whatever, whatever. And they just have a separate account for that, okay? So. Okay, Thank Great. you. Well, thank you. We, we appreciate it very much. Appreciate all the research you've done into this, as that's one of the things that helps to uh, make things happen a little bit faster, is when someone else can do the research and help you with a good starting place. So we really appreciate that. Excellent. Um, Any questions I can answer? Yeah. Board members? Board. Dan? Well, I, you, you said something about um, uh, having roots in Essex Junction or Essex Town, the community right. town, I guess we'd right. go, not just the village. but. Um, what establishes roots? I mean, as, as you know, as a military person, that people are constantly moving. You know, when you're right. in the military, you're, you live in a bunch of different places. So right. you get roots in many places. And so, you know, if he was born and raised here, but then he, you know, or she moved to, say, Alaska or New York, you know, somewhere yeah. in New York. So they, they put a banner up there, and we put a banner up here. But then there's, and the other thing is getting to know the people that don't necessarily have family here, how far back do you go? Because, I mean, I know of, of a, a, it's something I'm very passionate about is markers on gravestones and such, and there's a spot on the interstate here where there's a, there's a, a Revolutionary War yeah. uh, veteran right. who was a prisoner of, of Great I, Britain, I know. and it's off the interstate here. There's no way to access that cemetery where that's located here, off 889. Right. As a trooper, I was able to go down there and see it, but it's right. something I'm gonna follow up on. But anyhow, how do you find out the past, you go to the military and say, who served back in the Civil War, who is it, you know, to get all the, obviously you're not going to get pictures necessarily. Do you go, do you put some up without pictures, what do you? Not to interrupt you, Dan, and I love that because that was excellent, but thank you for that. Um, that's actually one thing I like about my approach is I don't split hairs. I mean, I don't split hairs. We're honoring military personnel. If they're there, they're in uniform, they've signed on a dotted line somewhere, mm -hmm. and they've served somewhere, that's good enough for me. Uh, as far as could they be in a banner in, in Plattsburgh, Alaska, and here, why not? Yeah. Does it take away from them in any respect? No. I don't want 10 of them in a row of him here, you know, or in Alaska. Maybe they do. I don't know. But I'm just saying that that's fine. As far as proof to their military service, you're going to... There are some records, and there are, if you do agree to the program, your veterans of foreign war and your American Legion will be able to verify everything that you need. Uh, Camp Johnson will, but I know the veterans of foreign war, you walk right up and just say, can you verify these? And they do all the work for you. That has nothing to do with you whatsoever. You submit a, net, a list of names, they handle finding out if it was correct or not. Nine times out of, probably 99 times out of 100, uh, that's generally not an issue unless you've had families that were feuding. And that is the only time, and I, honestly, I read one obscure, like, mm -hmm. when this program started in the 80s, you know, where they, they fought, the family fought because they wanted it by the old home, homestead. But again, that, that goes back to the location of it. They wanted it by the original homestead where the family was, and somebody else wanted it. So did that answer your question? What about picture? You said everything here has a picture. I'm saying you go back. Some of these people we may not have photos of, so do you right. put them up without photos as well? So you whatever you have that, that would serve as an image for them. For example, you could you could have a, a photographer, you can go out, my phone's an incredible phone. You just go out, take a beautiful picture of that memorial that we can't go up and see, mm -hmm. and you can put that up there, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's anything representative of that person uh, would be wonderful. You right. know, anything that, anything. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Right. I've got quite a few questions, so I apologize in advance. How big are our current banners? I have no idea. Which banner are you? The ones that currently hang on the poles and the poles. Oh, they're not this big, I don't think. They're, no. they're like 
two feet by one foot, I think. This is two and a half. Oh, they're bigger. They're bigger than that, George. They must be bigger. They're bigger than that. I don't like that. I wouldn't want to have seen. They're they're not maybe five feet long, but you'd be surprised, you know, when you when from the distance. When she's talking that's about it, it's, 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 it's right. deceiving to it's see. You know. It's the distance Sorry. because everything that size, you would not be able to get anything I'm, on there. You know? I'd want to match them. Yeah. Um, because I'd want it's consistent. Cohesion, cohesion throughout the village. Um, uh, where's the rest of the place? Um, I, I do feel like two years is too long. Yeah. I'm thinking, um, you know. A, we need to be able to respond to other groups when they come and say we want to also, now look what we're doing, we want to also perhaps put something up. So if we commit to two years on these, then we're sort of stuck for space. Mm -hmm. um, I'm for the period around Memorial Day, maybe six to three, three months around Memorial Day. Um, I'm not firm on that. Um, I'm also would consider doing something around Memorial Park. We have right over there. Um, Veterans Memorial Park at Five Corners, um, and um, have you, I'm, I guess I'm confused on who runs the program. So that's up to the board to decide. So you're, are you asking that the village staff take this project on, the village takes us on? I don't know. It's handled by <coughs> many different, in, in Plattsburgh it's held by just a person that happens to work for the town of Plattsburgh. It's just an additional duty she does, and she doesn't mind it. She considers it her donation of time. So if I, but yeah, it can it successfully be run through the Lions Club. The Kiwanis can take it on. Uh, school groups. My husband was mentioning there's some school groups and organizations, after school clubs. There's many different, you know, young and up and coming people. There's retired people that would love to do this. It's not an additional thing that you need to take on because Lord knows, like you just said, I've put together so many budgets. I know how many hours go into these things that we're not seeing that you bring to the table. So trust me, I know. That so it's an, it's an additional. If, if I may just jump in on that, one of the reasons why. It, Timing was terrible. One of the reasons why I had asked for Brad to come in um, is to also talk about what is the role of the Memorial Day Parade Planning Committee, uh, as the, the committee has representation from many of the organizations that are listed in here. And so if there is a way that uh, we can have that kind of a collaboration, as there are certain levels of decision making that I don't believe our board needs to be involved in, nor is it necessarily our expertise, whereas having people from the Memorial Day Parade Committee helping to take some of that on, I think would be beneficial. I, I agree with that, and I, part of my concern is we have an awful lot of, um, we have an awful lot now of decorative black light poles in town, mm -hmm. and we have an awful lot of veterans. Um, right, see, and that's so actually what I, a good point. We had so few, and that's why the two year. Yeah, my worry is that, that all of our avenues are gonna be aligned eventually with, with these only. Um, not that that's not relevant and valid and wonderful, but um, it, it doesn't leave, if we don't have some kind of rubric around how it works, and some perhaps, I hate to say the word limits, but limits or um, how, it, how they go up and come down, then, then that potentially could be all we have on, on poles. Um, and I don't think that they're big enough for two things. We don't have the telephone poles necessarily, we have these black decorative ones. Um, they only have one space. I, I recommend um, yours, yeah. So I would love to, yeah, I would love to hear what, if, if I didn't realize that was what Brad was here, but I'd love to hear what, what he thinks about it. And mm -hmm. If he wants to take on. Brad's got nothing else going on. Sure. <laughs> He's got capacity. Yeah. We just put digital signs all around. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, it's not fair. I mean, I would take, you know, the Memorial Day Parade Committee only meets um, for five months of the year, so it's not a year round committee. I'm not sure that committee has the capacity to take something like that on. I think it's, um, you know, if we set up a system, like she said, where there's a brochure and an application, and we all agree on criteria, that's certainly something our office could administer. Uh, I would defer to Evan. I would say we would administer, like, take the paperwork, order the banner. I would, I would ask that Ricky be the one to hang up the banners, because mm -hmm. uh, they do that already. Um, and so, I, you know, we could have a conversation either now or another time about certainly it's possible to do this. You know, if you want to talk about limiting it, um, 
we have grand marshals in the parade every year, so it could be the parade grand marshals are the ones who are featured. Um, as you know, and that would limit. We, we usually only have you know up to three grand marshals. Uh, the, com the community can nominate grand marshals. So if there were people who are passionate about somebody being a grand marshal, um, they have the ability to do that. And the Memorial Day Parade Committee selects those grand marshals. Um, that was just one idea. As to, in terms of like keeping it to a manageable number, um, that would be a, a possibility. Okay. I certainly feel like three would be a lot fewer than I. When I was talking about limiting it, I was thinking more a, a higher number than that. Um, but that was the other. So you guys feel like you feel like your office is set up to, to deal with that? Yeah, administratively, certainly. Okay. Um, working with Public Works, you know, to make that happen again under whatever criteria. If, it, if it's three or twelve, or they are up for three months, or six months, or two years. I mean. I, Okay. And, and I'd just like to interject, it doesn't have to be right from the Five Corners out. I mean, you can start at the Fairgrounds and work mm -hmm. one way. You can start okay. at Maple Street and, and pick up down by the school, whatever, and out that way, okay? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a big cluster in here where there's already a lot of stuff going on, where you have the fancy light poles, where you have the really nice marble curbs, you know, right. or granite curbs. So uh, you could limit it to, say, 50, you know, outlying every year, a new pool of 50, I don't know. You'd be surprised at, um, like, you drive down the road and you're like, I just passed seven. Like, you don't even realize, like, how quickly they just drive right by. So, I mean, two would go by like this, I'd, I'd drive by and I would not notice it. Is all, I yeah. wouldn't notice yeah. it. So, it's, it makes a statement when you see the commitment of your, on some of these outlying roads and you're going down a road that, you know, not this part of Pearl Street, obviously, but more toward like the end of Park Street or something. And you're still seeing this beautiful honoring, you know? I mean, it's yeah. not necessarily just right here at 2 Lincoln, you right. know? I know Evan had a hand up his head. Well, no, I just to say, I'm, I'm familiar with the ones in Ticonderoga, and I've been through there. I mentioned it to the board after you sent, I've sent you a response yeah. back um, I appreciate that. last year. And uh, no, I think it's, it's beautiful down there. And I, I mentioned the board. And those, I assume they must be about 30 by 60, I assume, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what he said was there. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. No, they're nice. And, but like, like Raj was saying, the poles here are, are shorter within you know, the confines of the village center, maybe on the outskirts or even into the town. I mean, it's something the village is addressing, but this is something we could talk at a joint meeting with the town, right. mm -hmm. because it doesn't have to just be in the village center. It can be exactly. all the way up, up exactly. through by Route 15 by the town center, or like it's she's saying, yeah, all over, right, right. exactly. I mean, people don't yeah. just live right here through the right. five corners. I mean, we use yeah. the circumferential highway. Right. I mean, my, you know what I'm saying? When when I go visit my dad, now he's on you know river. I don't go through here, yeah. right? you know? The only thing so that might be a problem is, is that within the village, I mean, the public works for the town, the village maintains certain roads and corridors, and are responsible for doing things. When, once you get out into the yeah. highways that are maintained by the state of Vermont, I've come to those there. roads where it's not being right, plowed. Right. Yeah, an old stage out there in that little. Well, anyway, it was just an idea to throw out there. I mean, I'm, I certainly <coughs> don't have all the answers. I really don't, but. I do know that there's, you know, quite a few military people that might be willing to step up. Like I said, some retired people, maybe some younger club members need to earn their hours for, for college, you know, papers or whatever. I have I have two kids that just, you know, they're in their 20s. So they did all the college right. stuff. And that's, it's an interesting, unique thing. I know the Boy Scouts of America, my brothers were both, you know, in my father, all of them were involved in, you know, Boy Scouts and stuff. They can take some, I mean, Girl Scouts, this is not something you have to do one more thing for right. your list because your list is not long enough I'm sure you know and uh, don't feel like it I'm just presenting the idea and realize it's a powerful statement that you're making as a, a concerted effort to say look it we're doing this because gosh darn it thank you uh, we said the Pledge of Allegiance when we came in here today and there's a reason we said that and so I, I hope that one of the things you do take away from this is not any kind of uh, judgment, not yes. any kind of judgment, not any kind of you did uh, tell me that. not wanting to do this, but mm -hmm. rather there are clearly some things that we need to define. There are some processes Logistics. that we need to figure out. So that way, when you do write the check, <laughs> we know where it goes, <laughs> that it gets put to the right place and it gets spent in the right manner, yeah. especially Absolutely. since we have our auditor here to question us. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, Evan. So. If the board is of a mind that they're interested in this, I would suggest 
You instruct me to get some staff together. I have several questions about the types of polls, where they might go, so I would come back to you. I just had this conversation with Ricky about Christmas um, and holiday displays, and one of our problems is how much they overhang or where they overhang into the street. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying we're against this. I'm just saying back to the comment, certain polls and certain things and what kinds of brackets, they're not the only ones who make these, but I would want to see a bracket and probably Ricky too and what it would take to do these things. Um, but if, if the board is of a mind for us to at least look at it, Brad is still here. Brad and I and others can get together and start discussing a idea of a plan, and then maybe we can. We have a very active VFW uh, locally and others. Maybe we can partner. But just I need to know if you're interested. If not, we. If so, we'll come back. If not, we thank you yeah, for. Absolutely. And before we get to that point, I know there was another question out in the audience. I want to make sure that if there are other questions. Sarah stole my uh, thunder. She uh, named the Boy Scouts. Gotcha. When you were looking for groups. Yeah. Great. <coughs> so, um, any other questions, concerns? Um, do we have a policy on who and how other groups wanting to hang things on the polls? How that works? We. It's a great question. No. As if we're not going to, we're going to do this. We should have a policy on how yeah. we vet other groups and come up with a way, not a long one, but a way to deal with other requests. Because they will come in, and other people will want to be on it, or other messages will want to be put up. And I'd also like to make sure an organization is vetting the suggested veterans who go up for post discharge um, information to make sure it's someone we want to feature. I hate to say that, but coming from my news background, yeah. people's lives are long and many events happen, and I hate to put somebody on a poll that you find out we should be. Right. And, then, and, and I was being a little casual about that, and that's true. That's my fault. There is a I, I meant in reference to being different multiple places. That's more what I was referring to. Uh, there's a very clear strict vetting policy that we adopt. There's and I didn't delve into it no, no, to know every little detail about it, but and Just they did say he, they did sit, keep going back to. Um, you have a right to the Freedom of Information Act, and so because of that, without filing FOILs, mm -hmm. you have that still right, and so you can go through the, either the Veterans of American Legion, mm -hmm. and they can find out the information for you much, much quicker, like we, right away. Your suggestion wasn't just for veterans. You said active duty. Active. So, so yeah. So I mean, it's uh, so if, when you I agree with Raj, you know, there's many things that can go on in somebody's career or. So then it's like you put something up and then you take it down because they dishonored. And it doesn't have to necessarily be something an incident that occurred tied to the service, but exactly. maybe in some other thing, in a criminal activity or some kind of act, legal activity, right. you know, here and or somewhere else. Right. You know. I mean that's true. I mean this one very there's so there's one a place in um, Ohio and I did one in Idaho. Um, that said you had to be passed, you had to have passed. Mm -hmm. And it was only in honor of, you know, in memory of, versus in honor of. So yeah. that's why I didn't even use the verbiage in honor of or yeah. in memory of. You so could do either or. And some, and like I said, we came from a smaller place where they didn't have enough enough people to uh, fill the polls if they didn't include those. You have a, a plethora of people, so you might want to be able to draw that. So, I mean, the one in Idaho, they ended up just saying, ah, you have to be interred, you know, or, yeah. have, you know. Amber, you have a question? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Do Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. And so Thank I think you. the sentiment of the board, I don't believe we necessarily need a motion for this, but to, to please go ahead and explore and come back okay. Yeah, okay. with some additional information so that way we can get this process started. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the research you've done, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your anniversary. Yes. Oh, we're going to dinner. Good. <laughs> no drive-throughs. Just want to let you know that. It's a rule. It's a rule. Thanks for coming, bro. Well. well, thank you again. Uh, and Brad, thank you as well. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Brad. And so that will bring us to agenda item 6B for the presentation of the audit report. Sarah. Yes. 
All right, everybody. So I'm going to invite Bill Kaiser up. Thank Bill you. is our lead auditor on our audit this year, and he's uh, with Cattell, Reagan, and Sargent. Um, I know in the past year she's seen Casey, and she's cycled out, so we yeah. look, she, and she left it all for you. Um, I'm going to let Bill just t take it away. Yeah, so uh, the Village of Essex Junction, we did the June 30, 2019 audit, and I'm happy to report we issued an unqualified re opinion. Uh, the one thing I did want to mention is that it was a year of transition for the village and the town as well with right. Lauren moving on and uh, Sarah having a new staff and Courtney Bushy coming on. Um, overall, on our end, I know there was eight months of transition or ten months of transition leading up to that before we got here, but as expected, the audit overall was very clean, nothing unusual from prior years. So. Um, the process, the, it was a seamless transition overall mm -hmm. uh, on Sarah's part. I know Lauren was still there to help out every once in a while, which we were thankful for that as well. Um, there was a single audit uh, for the village this year. A single audit is required for federal expenditures greater than $750,000, and that was obviously because of the Crescent Connector, Pearl Street linking in the previous year. Um, in the, for the single audit, we noted no um, significant deficiencies uh, or material weaknesses surrounding the village's internal controls, mm -hmm. um, which obviously is a good thing. Because of the single audit, we have to, in all, throughout all of our audit testing, um, check the internal controls are being properly followed, most notably around payroll, uh, cash disbursements, cash receipts, areas of that nature, and of the items we tested we did not document any weaknesses in those areas. Um, there were also no financial statement findings or um, findings related to expenditures being reimbursed that weren't available for reimbursement um, through the grants. And I know you guys have an engineering firm that helps out with that, and that, it, that process is obviously working out. Uh, into the financials, the financial statements start with the MD&A, which is a comparison of um, 2018 to 2019. It gives the man management of the village a chance to uh, describe the different funds that are reported in the financials. There's no significant changes um, in there this year to report. Uh, then the government-wide financials. I know before I got here you were discussing the difference between government-wide financials and fund financials. The government-wide financials are more of an accrual basis financial statement, what you would see in a regular for-profit business most frequently. Um, the largest number in the uh, government-wide financials is the net investment in capital assets. This looks like an equity figure, however it's $19.5 million in the general fund and just uh, 7.5 in the business funds. These are funds that aren't available to be spent. There's the gross fixed, the net fixed assets, less all the debt. Um, the available for spending is down in the unrestricted portion. Um, on the town, or on the village, sorry, it was an increase of 1.1 million in uh, 2019 for the general fund and a small loss in the proprietary funds, which are water, sewer, or water wastewater, sanitation, and rec. Um, another thing I wanted to note, the village obviously does not have any cash on its books. The cash is all held by the town of Essex. There is a large due to do from of five and a half million dollars. The town, I don't know how much, how often you track the town and their financial position, but they do have that cash available. If the two were to split, um, that cash would be able to be paid back rather than having a loan. <laughs> um, We're not going down that route. Though, right? <laughs> right? Let's not do that. Um, and there is also a there's interest being earned on that money. Um, that's always one of the things. If you, this cash isn't yours, are you not? But it, it's being held by somebody else. Obviously, you're earning interest on it, and you want to make sure you are collecting that. And um, the bill, there is an interest income allocated to the village. Uh, it, likewise, the town collects, for the last three or four years now, the town collects all the property tax revenues for the village. There are accounts receivable in the village for various grants, um, and the village 
still maintains all of its accounts receivable for water and sewer and sanitation, um, as well as unbilled revenues. So that's why you will see a large accounts receivable balance under the column for business type activities. Uh, the f fund financial statements, which as trustees you're more used to looking at because that's what you form your budgets off of um, for each fiscal year. Those are considered the modified accrual financials and more of a cash basis look at how operations are throughout the year. Um, because there are no accounts receivable, we, they have 60-day uh, cash collection reserves um, on property taxes. There's no need for that in the village. Um, all the, like I said, all the taxes are being collected by the town. Um, there are the equity restrictions is probably the most important piece to you as well as a voter um, on this balance sheet. There's non-spendable, restricted, committed, assigned, and unassigned. And there's a footnote laying out what all those figures are reserved for um, on pages 28 and 29 in the footnotes. The village does have a maximum unassigned fund balance policy of 10% and of budgeted expenditures, and that figure at June 30, 2019 is right at 9%. So you are within the line guidelines of that policy. Uh, then there's the proprietary fund financial statement, which is a breakout of water, sanitation, wastewater, and the rec department, which came on board for June 30, 2018. Um, business type funds are meant to be self-sustaining, in 2019, the water fund uh, showed a profit, a net profit overall. Sanitation and wastewater showed losses. Uh, and then the rec department also showed income for the year. The, while there are losses in 2019, um, and there was income reported in 2018 for sanitation and wastewater, the two years comparably for operations are very similar. Uh, in 2018, the only difference was there were some capital contributions that were um, some infrastructure that was basically given to the village from an area developer that pushed in, forced income onto the financial statement. Um, so it wasn't really a cash resource that was coming in showing that income. It was more infrastructure being donated. Um, and this year there is also a loss on disposal of an asset in the wastewater fund that you'll notice for $70,000, which is increasing that loss a little bit more than uh, may have been budgeted. Uh, the footnotes, the, the footnotes just uh, tie out with the information in the financial statements. For the first time in a few years, we didn't have any new footnotes that were required. Um, for governmental financial reporting, which is a good thing as accountants. <laughs> um, but everything is laid out in the, within the footnotes as far as uh, all the debt, the debt service that the village has um, for all the future years, capital assets, um, like I said, the fund balance restrictions, things of that nature. Uh, then we have the required supplementary information which gives you, as well as the town, or the village for town, uh, village meeting day, um, an idea of, it shows the budget that was voted on, as well as how each department performed within that budget. Mm -hmm. um, and this year there was a debt, funds were overexpended. It looks as if it was, that was the case of $67,000. However, that overexpenditure was made up by previous years committed and assigned resources. So it wasn't that you went over budget in that area. Those funds were just committed from previous years. So it was more anticipated. Um, and then there's the other supplementary information consistent with prior years. We have the non-major funds on the fund financial statements and it's just a combining schedule of what makes up those smaller funds within the financial statements. Um, nothing out of the ordinary. That's all I have for you. Well, thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions, uh, if the board doesn't mind. Uh, so we talked, you talked about how we have the policy of a 10% unassigned fund balance. Yes. In your opinion, what do you, what do you think of 10%? Is that enough? Is it not enough? Is it too much? Or is... You know, I, I think that 
10% is a good number. It really depends on the financial strength. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to go too far with it. Um, it gives the trustees more leverage to commit various funds to put options out there for the board. Uh, you don't want to run into it if you have a down year, because mm -hmm. um, any, anything can cause that. You don't want to run into an issue where you have a deficit in your unassigned fund balance, which is possible. Uh, right now at $450,000 roughly, yeah. that is healthy and you've got plenty of funds set aside for future years use. Um, if you were going to increase that figure, it may take away from one year not being able to hold property tax rates flat mm -hmm. and committing a fund for a budgeted loss in a future year. Mm -hmm. um, over 10% is typically what you see in municipalities that do have that policy. Um, there are some municipalities but that don't have that policy at all. Mm -hmm. But it's certainly at the discretion of the Board of Trustees. I got you. Um, my last question, uh, given how complex our relationship is with the town, uh, with the sharing of services, with the consolidation efforts that we've had, um, does, of course our staff is doing a fantastic job, does that open up uh, any concerns for additional risk or any uh, additional um, red flags in your mind? And or does it make audits like this more difficult? Um, in some areas more difficult, in some areas uh, more streamlined. Uh, all the checks are cut out of one account, so we're able to do accounts payable testing, things like that um, in one, out of one checking account. Where the risk is, is a check being expensed to the town that was actually meant for the village or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Things like that, property taxes, same idea. Uh, when we do our audit though, one of our responsibilities as auditors is to make sure that those expenditures are meant for the purposes of the village or the town. Mm -hmm. Obviously it's not something we do every day because this is a special mm -hmm. situation. Right. Um, but yeah, there is an added risk. However, we haven't noted any of those issues. Mm -hmm. One thing we did see this year, and I think it would have happened um, regardless, is uh, the water district mm -hmm. had a metering issue where $28,000 of water was billed to the town instead of the village. The town paid for it. Mm -hmm. And while we were doing our line loss calcul our loss calculations on the town, we noticed a huge discrepancy where it looked like the town lost a ton, a ton of water that wasn't sold. And that uh, the village made water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're pretty talented. Exactly. The village produced water. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of made That's the circle back easier. So, yeah. <laughs> we had that issue. Sarah worked with the um, water district and they were able to find the discrepancy in the meter. It ended up having, the, it was an issue that was corrected on their end in March or May, I believe. Yeah. And it was just never never reported to the town or the village. So there are issues like that, but again, I think because of that line having a meter issue, it would have happened regardless. Right. Um, but yes, there is a risk involved, well, and it's on the administration yeah. and the management to... But the, certainly in the long range, being together mm -hmm. is something that would help to alleviate any kind of risks like that, as there would just be one account. Absolutely. It would be, yes, it would be one true financial mm -hmm. statement. If I could add, because we use the same software and the same process, mm -hmm. village to town, and uh, creating a chain of who supervises the approval of certain activities, we go through multiple layers of people who have to approve it and it's done electro electronically, it's the same process. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we instituted was we have electronic, everything's electronic now, or almost everything, if Invoices. not everything. Well, Invoices. Yeah. So mm -hmm. everything is electronic and kept. No so more files, nice. no more of this, that, or the mm -hmm. other thing. So when we do our audit, they can even grab something from us. I believe it's remotely. They have yeah. their own login to yeah. look at the invoices. And the so we, so we, we are standardizing our process so one day, if we do merge, that process does not change at all, mm -hmm. other than maybe who is the approver. Right. Yeah. And the account yeah. numbers. Correct. And on management side, that's one of the easier things, is all the invoices, for example, are marked um, as received, and they're all coded with a GL. So when you're going through the check warrants and reviewing the invoices and matching them up, 
the village is a 200 level GL code and the town is a one. So if you see a discrepancy there, that's an easy way to just simply identify that something might not be coded to the correct place. Other board members? Um, I, I just, this is not really so much a question, and probably not a specific question you can answer, but I just wanted to get feedback here. And by the way, I really love, it's like, this is like an alternative version of the budget, and I love looking at it this way. It's like looking at the bones of the budget. We look at the, at the skin and the hair, and, and yeah. we're looking at the bones, and it's an interesting way to look at the whole thing. But I'm, I'm interested just in our recreation, you know, the enterprise funds, or what you call the business funds, for sanitation sewer, they're pretty, they're pretty locked down in terms of, you know, the water, we sell the water, the water comes back in, and we know that that money's gonna come here. But the recreation issue is interesting to me because even though we're not making a profit, we're actually running a fairly good sized little business, mm -hmm. in, in, in a sense. And it's some speculation. We're anticipating, or the rec department is anticipating, is, you know, $2 million worth of financial activity and what happens if it if uh, you know it, we we do all, everything gets set up and then a whole bunch of rain happens that year and a lot mm -hmm. of programs get you know so I'm just interested are there any sort of warning systems in terms of percentage of your total budget that you don't, you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself if you anything I, any thoughts about that I don't have any thoughts for that directly however I feel like a lot of the recreational programs mm -hmm. there are the, there is a setup time but there's also the fee directly the cost directly associated to those events that would get canceled mm -hmm. so if there was some like a complete washout mm -hmm. you don't have those expenses offsetting those lost revenues um, so yeah exactly it is hard to make a budget on something that like leagues and things yeah. like that um, participation <laughs> it's hard to so mm -hmm. yep. it all de it really depends on participation being the driving factor in right. EJRP. Right. And, and yet we do have a positive fund. One of the reasons yeah. for that is exactly that. Every year you have winners and losers in programs. Mm -hmm. Some go fabulously well and make a few extra dollars than what you thought. Some did not do so well. And you have a fund that allows you to try new things, upgrade equipment, um, take care of some of our properties that the programs are run out of, so that we're able to bounce. Yeah, no, it if goes, you have a it bad, goes smoothly. It's, I mean, it's just like a wonderful like the, little machine. If you're, if and you're, I'm just concerned that you know we're whistling along and thinking oh, this is fabulous, yeah. and then some we oh we didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and all of a sudden we're out. A hundred thousand bucks it, or something. It's not. It's not a voted budget. Yeah. Um, the um, rec department, I would imagine, is the department that sets the fees for yes. the events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. after one, if there was a loss here, you can look back and say, okay. where do we need to increase fees? Where did we go wrong? Mm -hmm. Like Evan was just saying, um, there is a hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars available to to lose. Okay. Um, <laughs> so there, there is room, um, right. but. Not yeah. all at once. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. I just, just, just get something. Thank you. you know, a lot of times, oh, every year, you guys talk to us about fraud. And, and, yeah. the, and, and the, the possibility of it, do we know of anything? And so what I was going to ask you is, when you were doing this, how do we rate in our processes? Um, because it's very important you yeah. know, that we have public confidence, that the monies that are coming in are spent correctly, and they're all there, they're supposed to be there. So every auditor will say that the purpose of the audit is not to prevent right. against fraud. However, the part of the internal controls that we review, making sure the same person that's not recording invoices, signing, signing checks, there are controls in place. With the experience of both Sarah and Courtney, and likewise last year with Sarah and Lauren, as well as the finance department and the trustees and directors' involvements, um, I would say yes, the controls are in place to prevent some of the embezzlement uh, cases that you see really throughout Vermont even. Um, it, it, unfortunately, it is a frequent event, a frequent issue. Um, I would say the controls are in place. If we did come across something that, where we could see a loophole, we would recommend it, and we haven't made a re such a recommendation. I think when Lauren first came on with the town, we went through some controls with her and uh, Doug Fisher, 
and they, there were some changes made. Uh, that was also at the same time as the merger mm -hmm. plan starting to take effect. Um, Thanks. But yes, sorry. I appreciate it. Any board members have any other questions? Yeah, I'm good. Sarah, is there anything that you would like to add? Two things. I just want to pick up oh. on this conversation and talking about internal controls. The way we look at it in, in finance, and Courtney and I have worked together you know, back in St. Albans and now here, there is no one person who could steal money and cover it up. That's the base of all the controls. If you have the password authority or you're in charge of the whole process, that's a problem. So we make sure that no one person could steal money and cover it up. Right, so there are people who handle cash. Could cash go missing? Mm -hmm. Sure, it could. Has it? No, because then there's a secondary control making sure everything is where it should be. The finance department also does not handle cash. Ask anybody in the finance department to man the window and you'll see everyone get really squirrely like, oh no, we don't, as finance people, we don't like cash. Don't get that near us. <laughs> so we reconcile things on the back end. We manage the funds. Also with any of, um, I know recently in, in Norwich there was wire transfer. I don't even know, do you even call that fraud? It was, a, you know, they got tricked. It wasn't, yes. you know, it wasn't really theft, but sure, okay. It wasn't um, theft we, by the employee. Right, right. Duped. right. They were duped. Um, we do not, there are dual controls at our bank. So no one person can like upload a transaction and then initiate it. So you have to have two people involved in order to do anything on the banking side. So we take this very seriously um, and we look through this lens often. And we, we have a robust enough staff so that you we're really lucky in that, that we have enough redundancy to, to take care of some of these segregation of duties issues that in a small staff might be difficult to do. The second thing I want to add is I love, George, that you said this is like the alternative budget. Because mm -hmm. in my world, the budget is like the alternative financial statement. It's like financial <laughs> prep. Because for me, this is where it's at. This is my absolute favorite thing. I love the audit. It, I, <laughs> I feel you okay. Oh, no. The only client that we have that says that. <laughs> I was going to ask Casey, Casey and I have discussed it before. Everyone's so happy. I know. I, mean, so happy right now. I think yeah. Sullivan Powers would uh, would like confirm that as well without me. But this, like, we work so hard all year long, and at the end of you know, to make sure things are expensed in the right place, and to reconcile accounts monthly. I just went through both general funds budget budget to actual year to date and I looked at anything that's odd and I made just a couple reclassifications which I was really pleased about. But then we put together all these awesome spreadsheets and we reconcile the numbers and we do a reasonable disc check and then these guys come in, they find like the 10 big things we missed in the first day. But they're really nice about it. Um, and putting it all together in these beautiful financial statements is just like the highlight of my year every year. So I really appreciate you all taking the time to invite Bill in to hear about it and you know, perusing them, even if you were bribed with chocolate this so, year. So Sarah, would you do this for free, your job? Or is it free if something let you do the audit free? Yeah. Would I do it for free if I had another source of income? Yeah, I love this job. Okay. I love this okay. work. Yeah. Okay. Just you know, actually, when, what I would. So when you win the lottery, yeah. we'll call you in. Call me. Yeah. When I win, when I win the lottery, what I want to do is yeah. go like town to town and see how everyone does their books. Yeah. 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 So what? So thanks. Question yeah. for Sarah on the, the whole thing that you're talking about doing the audit and enjoying it. Now, when we were going over the budget, the alternative mm -hmm. that you were talking about. Um, the computer system that you or the program that you want so that'll make it even easier right is that I, correct? yeah I think that that is really gonna tie together oh getting I'm just so excited you guys I really think that so I'm just gonna cut loose I think that that is the missing link between the budget and this and how do we then look at the budget compared to the financial statements and see how do we get here from there I could show you how we got here from there, but it would take a lot of time and effort, and there's just some disconnect. No, stop it. This is just, you know, it's... The excitement. This is, you know... Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. I think that that's going to be the missing link. Financial statements are still my favorite, though. Well, I, I really appreciate the time and effort, the energy that comes into this. I mean, one of the things that I've unfortunately witnessed, not from this board, not from the village, not from the town, but from other examples from, uh, within government, 
how there are employees who sometimes are less enthusiastic about their job, which clearly is not the case here. So the fact that you're clearly in the right position, driving your passion, fueling that fire, I really appreciate that because it helps us to understand it and want to be here having this conversation. Yes. So thank you. You're, thank you all. I appreciate you humoring yeah. me as well. And so of course, thank you for yes. being here as well. Thank you for having me. Yes. yes. Um, sure. all right. And just one other, you know, everything you just said is dead on. We have great consultants who help with this. We have employees. It's also the whole process of a budget Mm -hmm. and your philosophy on funds and why you have surplus funds. Yeah. Some people do not understand or want you to give surplus funds back to the public and then something bad happens right. and you don't have the money to fix it. If we had not gotten money from the federal government to fix Densmore because of the storm, yeah, no. where would that money come from? It comes from either unassigned fund balance or a or you have to juggle something else you're going to do. It's the world we live in. Nothing ever goes 100% to plan 100% of the time. It just doesn't. So you guys understand that. We appreciate it. It also helps make our jobs go because we're not fighting you on any of those issues to do it or not do it. So, thank you. Yeah. Um, and I work with Sarah every day, so the enthusiasm. Very lucky person. <laughs> I do want you all to know that this is the 12th audit that I've been a part of since my short foray as an auditor when I was like, I hate this, so kudos to you guys. But, um, and this is the first time that I've ever left an audit with just one issue. We just were trying to figure out that water yeah. discrepancy. So when they left, mm -hmm. There was one yeah. thing, so the bar is high. I don't you know. That's, that's so actually <laughs> part of the town and village audits. I think that's the fewest, that, that was the only issue, and usually we have a few outstanding items. So, yeah, that was, it was, it was yeah. a great year. Great. great. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Thank you sir. See you Thanks, next Bill. week. Enjoy Absolutely. Your <laughs> so, as you're transitioning, where was the error? It was the water. Oh, where was it? So where the was first, the no, the first, no one, no, no, no one. The first draft that I sent you guys just had like something pulling from a hidden cell and it, it had a negative like $700 on one of the pages. Oh. And then the second draft did that. You're telling me out of the millions of dollars we just saw, you caught the $700? <laughs> I think that's what, that's what he thought when I called. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, oh. There's some, there's, I noticed something that's, that's inconsistent. He was like, they're final, they're printed. And I was like, well, it's on page three. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Great. So that will transition us Sorry. on. <laughs> that will transition us on to item 6C, the adoption of the fiscal 21 budget and capital program budget. Back to the alternative financial statements. Uh, the normal one. <laughs> The budget. Are you ready for a motion? Yeah. Um, before we get there, uh, I uh, before we get to the motion, um, this is the last time that we would have a chance to discuss the budget before it goes on to the voters. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, I just feel the need. Uh, I would make a motion to direct staff to locate the proposed sign from EJRP at a location central to the Five Corners intersection and not at Maple Street Park. So would, that, would there be a second to that motion? That. I'll second that. So would there be any further discussion on this motion? So what does that mean for the line item in the HRP capital budget? Nothing. <coughs> it does nothing to change the line items. It does nothing to combat the sign itself, just purely the location. What's that? What? Can, can you, I don't totally understand that maybe we should have avoided the guy, but I, I, I kind of get why Brad wants it there, but why wouldn't he want it? What, what's the, what is he thinking of achieving having it there? So I'm not sure if the... <coughs> Uh, if the hesitation is around control, is around who posts what on the sign, mm -hmm. frankly, that's an issue that I would really hope the staff can just figure out. If our goal is to have everybody, as many people as possible to see this message, why would we spend, even if it's $30,000, why would we spend this $30,000 to give it to one-fifth of the population as opposed to the Hall of Fifths? Yeah. Right. No, oh, go ahead. I, just, I, I agree with it. Uh, yeah. My, my concern is aesthetic. I mean, 
I can I can actually I I I want it here where more people are going to see it. I can see it fitting in ironically more in front of Maple Street this building. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time envisioning. So I guess I would say I I agree with this motion. I agree with that the effort. I'm just <coughs> I want to go through a, a process where we're very I should sure we're very very careful about the design, the placement, mm -hmm. and um, all the way down to brightness and how and you know all of that. It, it needs to fit in with the character of this yep. building if it goes in front of it, and with our future hopes for the entire. Um, and I'm sure that's all going to be yeah. taken care of, but I just. You know. I don't want to speak for former planning commissioners. Mm -hmm. Having been to a few meetings, I wholeheartedly have seen the amount of conversation around okay. the lighting, around the concerns for lighting. And Amber, I don't know if you want to talk more about that. No, all I was just going to say was that, I mean, I think we're getting into the, to the planning commission decision here. Right. And so, I mean, I totally understand where you're coming from. Um, I think there's, I mean, maybe there's just a simple way of saying, you know, the, the trustees would like to have a, 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 a bite at this when it comes to us uh, or when it comes down to it but the, but the decision is at the planning commission level and they do take into consideration all of those things like the, the brightness etc I mean but there is I think yeah. Brad brought the LDC sections to the last meeting um, so if there was something about it if the village did it the trustees would get a bite at it no matter what so if there's a village entity, municipality that was doing it, the village with the trustees would yeah. have a yay or nay or with the planning commission okay. or after the planning commission. Well, the whole thing, this has been discussed before. This isn't the first time it's come up. Right. Uh, Elaine, we had, you remember, we, we brought this all up. We had the big yeah, sign yeah. 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 here. Um, and if it is here, obviously over there, it's going to be a, 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 a wreck thing. I prefer it obviously here because, as you say, much more traffic, it's more visible, and every, everything. It's not just going to be rec stuff, it could be what, what, whatever is going on. I mean, senior center or voting, the vote, trying to get people out to know that it's voting. It's hard enough to get, put stuff, if we can put stuff and get more people out there, it's worth it. I agree with you, Raj, about the, the aesthetics of it and how it blends in. I don't want something that's cheesy, neon. That, doesn't, you know, it's just too too bright, doesn't fit at all. Something that, that complements the architecture around here. And I mean. I, I was skipping right over the, the planning commission, I apologize for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was skipping right over their role, so. Well, and their role would be, please again, correct me if I'm wrong, but their role is to take the application in front of them. It's not to repurpose the location of what's in front of them. No. They're gonna take the application. Right, so if the application is to approve or not approve the sign on Maple Street Park, it's not going to have the conversation around should it be there, what should have already happened. So yeah. that's the intent of this right. conversation. And their decision would probably, depending on where it goes, they might get put make one decision versus in one place versus another. Right. Yeah. I I just think that that um, I'll be blunt. I, you know, I think the the village rec department kind of operated autonomously for years and years and years. Yes, it was part of the Essex Junction School District, but they were really, they, they weren't part of the school district, obviously. They were just administered by the school district. And, and it is, we did bring it into the village now, and, and maybe it, it, to me, having a sign down on Maple Street kind of sends the message, oh yeah, they're still, they're still a separate entity. Mm -hmm. you know, they still get there, they still exist separately from the rest of us, and yeah, maybe they need to be Maybe they need to be incorporated into the village a little bit more into, into what's right. going on with all the other, you know, the library and everything else here. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Good. Dan? Well, another, you know, we're looking at November vote, and if the, the merger happens, I'd rather see the sign here or you know in in the village in the community center, as it were, not the geographic center of the community, but definitely more the the um, village or the community downtown area, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just, but Brad, yeah, I, yeah, and, and I mean, what Brad has in mind, what I'm guessing is that it would, it would just be strictly rec department events that are advertised, yeah, that's, that are on the uh, side. And what we're talking about is, yeah, there'd be rec department events, but it's also, there's a meeting at the high school, or don't forget volume. to pay your water bill or something like that. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. yeah. I'm saying that those are conversations that our staff okay. should be having, All right. and that they should be, they are well equipped to. I think we're going to, rather than have, like, Raj's concerned about the whole thing of aesthetics today, and, Rather have a sign here, sign there, sign there. We have one, not a mm -hmm. tiny little sign, but a significant sign, big enough to accommodate 
so that you could scroll through, have a message, voting this day, there's a, you know, you know, pub, uh, fireworks celebration at the fire thing, this yeah. and that, you know, some things. People aren't going to have a lot of time to read, so you're going to have to, you know, keep it a quick bullet of what, you, what you're trying well, to get across. Also replace the vinyl signs. So right, people to right. Fly over it takes forever and ever. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. You, know, you just give us the message, sign up, just like they do, and it'll yeah. just rotate. Anyway, I just wanted to, I apologize okay. for skipping over the planning commission, but I, I do, my, I do agree that it's the better place for the, so there's a motion on the table. It's been seconded. Is there any further conversation about the motion? All those in favor of the motion, please, uh, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Thank you. I'll go ahead and... Uh, this is a long one. <laughs> uh, I would make a motion that the trustees adopt the various FY21 budgets in the amounts listed within the memo. I'll second. And is there any further discussion on that motion? Yeah, I wanted just to just uh, just talk for a minute about the um, the capital reserve fund. I'm not I'm not I'm not criticizing the budget, but I'm just anticipating. Um, you know that on the on the government the government sub the governance subcommittee we're talking about the possibility of this. Um, but while we're right here on this subject, and if we were to go ahead with that concept, what what's a reasonable amount of money? For if we went ahead and said we're going to deduct the, the amount of money that if we did merge that we would transfer from the village into the town general fund, we're going to reduce that amount. The concept is that the, we would reduce it by, by several factors, and one of those factors would be the general, the, the general fund, I mean the capital reserve. And right now, this year, we're putting 541000 but that's a little bit more than we've, than we've historically been putting in traditionally, right? That's and so, correct. And so, and so what, uh, what's a good figure? What, you know, just take a swing at it. Sarah. <clears throat> oh. Is 500000 400000 Well, here's, I've just put up on the screen the transfers and miscellaneous uh, budget segment. And so I know that when we had been talking about this capital district holdback, for lack right. of a better term, we had been talking about just the capital fund contribution, which is just the top line here. Uh, Three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars in the FY twenty budget. Four hundred thousand dollars in the FY twenty-one budget. Right. So. Okay. okay. The. So we hang yeah. so The five. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I I I lost you a little bit. The five hundred and forty-one thousand on this memo is the anticipated spending, the out of the capital fund, the general fund capital reserve fund in FY21. Right, and so we have been talking about the transfer, which is embedded up yeah, in that 5.3 yeah, million. Know, million. Um, so what is, a, what is a good number? That's a great question. I think that you would really, it comes down to which of these lines, which of, Back there. right there, these lines are most appropriate for that hold back district. I think we're in agreement that the capital fund contribution line would be. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know of if we could, I don't know if the rolling stock would or would not be. That's things with wheels. You know, so. so is, mm -hmm. is your question, George, what is the right amount in that yes. line item? Yeah, so my, my question is for the, is for the top, is, yeah, what, what is the right amount in the line item exactly? Uh, what is the right amount? In the line I'm, I'm just getting just ballpark figure. 400,000 looks like it. Uh -oh. That's the FY21 budgeted amount. If yeah, you I do, know. I know. We're not going to put it. That's that amount's going to be. That that amount's going to increase. We're talking about a standard amount that's going to be that that would be the same for the next twelve years. So one of the things that the capital committee had recommended from a few years ago was to increase it by fifteen percent every yeah. year, largely because right. it hadn't been funded enough. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So to keep it at four hundred thousand, when the capital committee had said that's not enough. Well, it, it, it would, what do we want? Well, it wouldn't be funding all the cap, all the all the village projects. I'm just saying, reducing, it, 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 reducing the transfer of the of the total village uh, general fund to the town by it, by a certain amount. Um, but and, and that would be that would pay for some that would go towards existing capital projects in the village. But it wouldn't necessarily pay for all the capital projects in the village. I, I, got, I, I, I got an issue with this. We're going to be taking on our debt, our bonds, our anything we have, we're going to be paying off. Mm -hmm. we, we continue, while going through this transition, as we always have, paying for any capital projects in the town. We already do that. Yep. So why are we getting so worried? And not to be, you know, yep. well, I'm going to I, keep I, my money, you know, but I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, I understand. We're already paying that, so I don't really have a big issue with I understand. Gotcha. I understand. Right. I, just, I want to clarify because I'm a little lost. Okay. Blunt. 
are you asking? Because my, my assumption from the discussions in the GovSet was that we wouldn't be sending any capital. Any, the 400 is what we're proposing to collect. Right. For this next fiscal year. Right. For us. Why wouldn't all of that be staying right. mm -hmm. yeah. every year and increase? So if we're going to tax for 12 years village residents, a separate tax for capital, mm -hmm. we're already going to have a separate allotment out of the town of the new town budget, the proposed new town budget. Why would we send one dollar more than that? I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm just wondering. If, I'm, I'm understanding trying, the question. I, I, my concept is to is to go to the two joint boards uh -huh. and say, here's here's besides obviously the the village is a debt district that yeah. that has to happen. Yeah. But everything else, saying, here are four different four different tools you can sure. use to lower that total uh, that total three point three million dollar transfer that you're going to have to make in the year year one of the merger. Mm -hmm. Down to something like 2.7 million. Right. Okay. Here's and, and you can use any of them or none of them or, or any combination. That's all I'm saying. And so I, I'm looking at it. I'm sort of like testing the value of each one of these tools and trying to get a sense of how much one, each one would be. So we've got and, 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 and and I understand. I understand it's political. I, I I'm not saying I'm not saying we're making a decision. Obviously we're we're, we're voting on the budget time. But, but I'm just trying to get a sense of, of of dollar amounts in my own head. You know, as I we we try to formulate this. And I'm just trying to get. The directions in my head correct. That's okay. All. I'm not forget the politics, but if we kept for the in 22, let's say went up 15 percent. So if we kept like 450, if it was the line was 450, right, and we kept 450, that would reduce that 3.2 million. Mm -hmm. by, it would be now 3.15, mm -hmm. whatever. You know. Um, are you looking for an additional after that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I would say the same. You you. Have the same amount year in and year for for every year of the twelve years. So right. the same amount that the village would only be voted on by the would only be uh, paid for by the village um, for, along with George, the payback of the debt. George, for clarification. Yeah. Let's just say the number on the screen is four hundred one nine fifty five. Right. Is the four hundred one in your mind four hundred one nine five five the same amount year two? Yes. Year three. Yes. Year twelve. Yes. Yes. And. That money raised stays for village projects that are on the village list. Yes. Just yes. for clarification. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other stuff that everybody pays for in the taxes goes to the town. Right. The town has a capital list. Yeah. The capital list could include village projects Absolutely. in years 1 through 12. But the, tw but the 12 years of projects... Are specific to the well, village, right? The time, the time exactly. I there, just want that. There's concern. nothing saying that if you merged, that the merged capital fund, new town capital fund, money from that couldn't go and spend it all in the village one year if you wanted to. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying, look at look at we have a we have an up, up, outstanding bond of two and a half million dollars if we have a fund merger. Now that gets paid back at whatever it is X amount. For the next 12 years. Mm -hmm. Is that amount going to fluctuate year in and year out? Go up, 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 down, down, down? No, it's the same amount. You're paying back the same amount year in and year out, right? It's broken down, down a little bit. Uh, yes. But, okay. But you're big, you've got 12 payments, yes. right? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Sure. That's what I'm saying with each of these other things. Mm -hmm. It's a fixed amount. Once you get into well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna it's, uh, it's, change it, vary it, expand it, make no. Then you need to have another elected board. Then you need to then it, can, it, it needs to just be a fixed amount that you're gonna commit the village to. I'm not saying we should do this. I'm just trying to give the joint board's tools mm -hmm. to think about. So if we were looking at that list from before, right? if we want to consider things like, well, if we're going to be a sidewalk district, we want to probably pull some out of the rolling stuff. Don't we? We're going to have to There's different ways you could do it. You know, add money. Just think about additions for, anyway. So this, this is in my head. In terms of what number would work, part of me would like to see the capital committee take a pass at what would 401, the 401,000 over 12 years do. Yeah. Uh, what would that mean for the, the projects that are on that list? Right. Yeah. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. I didn't mean to kidnap the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. we can, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I just, just and, wanted to hear some speculation. And since we're not tackling it this yep. year, I would yep. hope to yep. sweet baby bejesus, as we say it in my house, yep. uh, that... The subsequent year, we, we do a local option tax, so that way there's that additional 1.2, 1.3 million to yep. tap into. Mm -hmm. Today's Vermont edition was yeah, about local options. I was options. so mad I missed it. 
I had it up all morning to remind myself to listen, and then I stepped away from my desk, came back at one. And missed it. Oh. Yeah. We can still listen to it. Tomorrow or tonight, yeah. Well, if we had, it was on at seven, right? Seven. Now we're an hour and ten minutes late. Oh, well. <laughs> so there's a motion on the table uh, that has been seconded about adopting the motion so approved in, or so said in 6C. Any further uh, discussion about that motion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, thank you. And. Motion to approve it. Set agenda. Nice. Is there a second? I'll second. I like the way you do this now. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Be opposed. Thank you. Reading file. Board member comments. Anybody? Do we have a date for the strategic advance? Or was there a poll? Do we work for that date on that? Is there any? I am of the opinion it's Saturday, May 2nd, and it's going to be morning till maybe 12.30. Probably 8.30 to 12.30. <coughs> And we are looking at the uh, locate local locations, mm -hmm. maybe the police station. So if a uh, if something could go out to the board, just saving the day. I, I I think that's kind of the day that just kind of got. Mm -hmm. it, did, it did get thrown out. I remember reading it. I think Tammy or somebody, I just read somebody, somebody said something about it. Yeah. Is there a backup date? No, but what, I'm aware a of that. <laughs> no, just another, another date another date in consideration because I don't remember I just don't remember a consultation on whether that was a good date or not we were originally I, looking at the week before I but I believe that's a school vacation week mm -hmm. and therefore it became the next day the mm -hmm. other reason why we want to do it earlier rather than later is we have new trustees that are going to get installed we want to use this also as part of the orientation well, maybe we won't have new trustees. I mean, it'll all depend we on We are going to have one in the select board. <clears throat> Sorry, I use that term generically. <laughs> well, I'm kidding. It's getting late. <laughs> um, yes, the only other thing was I forwarded. Yep. I haven't sent it off. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I received an email. Someone I know um, was traveling through the five corners here, and his son was in the vehicle with him. They're, his two boys are Cub Scouts. Noticed that the American flag at Memorial, um, the Veterans Memorial, or what do you call it, the park or whatever, was on the ground. And uh, so the boy told his dad, and they stopped, they got the flag, they brought it over to the police department, um, and uh, was quite nice. So they brought it there and made sure the police, you know, um, and I forwarded it to Andrew, but um, we we're going to, I figured I'd discuss it with you guys. And, just mention it, but uh, I don't know how it happened. What what happened? I have no idea if the wind or something like that. Um, I mean, they can't. Those those are kind of the poles are kind of locked. They can't get. Through. Yeah, okay. I Maybe don't. would think you know. If I could get last, some information. This is past Saturday. Um, I've got it. Well, let me see here. I don't know. Is the and yeah. And let's see here. Yeah. Cheese. I had said to, or I had sent a message back to Dan saying that I'll forward it along yeah. if you yeah. wanted me to. And yeah. by the time I yeah, it's all right. Response and it's all right. Chance to do no that worries. Yet, but I just yeah. we don't have um, cameras or anything that's gonna point. Let me forward it. Is there one on that? I'll send it to you to yeah. forward to. But we appreciate their yeah. their efforts to yes. pick yeah. up the flag yeah. and to bring it to the police station. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, can I, I just want to have just a question. I, I know, I, I'm sorry, I, I asked this before and I'm, I'm, I forgot the answer. Our economic, depending on the tax rate, economic development fund, is that sunsetting this year? Is that next year. Next year. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Where we with that. Um, one other thing I will mention, um, I had lunch at the Sherpa LLC mm -hmm. down oh, here, yes. uh, the former Firebird location. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Just want to mention that it was uh, they're not they're they're not too up on the whole advertising world right now. But I just mm -hmm. thought if anyone was looking for that kind of food, it's a great spot. So, so sure, food, like food, like Nepalese type food. Nepalese Indian food, yeah. Yeah. really good, yeah. very good stuff. So, so yeah. Yeah. I really appreciate the new village. village. The, the number of new options we've had recently. Yeah, I really it's appreciate really it. Really it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
Great. Not that pizza shops are bad, but I mean, no, it's, always it's, nice it's, it's just great having mm. this diversity. Yeah. Yeah. Diversity is the spice of life, right? Yeah. So, maybe just beg, if anything like that comes up, Dan, just please oh, yeah. text me or whatever, because, you know, I wasn't here this weekend, you all know that, but the, I just got lots of morning. things happen yeah. that, mm -hmm. that maybe weren't intentional during a storm. Or like, I, I mean, I, I've been in this business a long time. I have, the reasons why flags go up and down is amazing nowadays. They used to only happen if somebody, you know, a president died or the, you know, the governor of the state. We have to take the, the, the flags up and down several times a month and maybe something happened and maybe, so I, we'll find out, but obviously not, in, we don't believe it would be intentional, no, but no. Um, so I'll look in. So the only, th the only thing I wanted to mention is, uh, so this Saturday is that meeting with regards to uh, the uh, merger proposal. Um, the details are still being ironed out as there's a whole host of emails between Elaine and I and, and staff. I think, George, you've been in on yep. them as well. Um, so stay tuned. If you're around on, on Saturday, come on over. It'd be great to Do have as many responsibilities around this. Or? Details are still being worked out. <laughs> Stay tuned for additional get that details. Memo. Yes, it's coming up. <laughs> it is. Um, Absolutely. We know. Actually, you're supposed to have a snack. <laughs> I, 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 I have a few more hours of my attention on that. I, 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 I know it, though. The ADL tournament is coming up, and I know we talked about this a few meetings ago about whether we wanted to have any conversations or take a position on 3-3, and we all decided no, mm -hmm. and I did too, and I'm completely rethinking that. I think that largely village, I've heard from so many of my neighbors mm -hmm. that are wondering what this is all about. They're not, the discussion isn't so much in the village right now, it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe looking at the select board's approach to what I thought was just budget, but is now complete outreach when it comes to every topic in front of us right now. I think it would behoove us to rethink, do we want to at least start messaging and or showing up at some events and kind of letting people know this is coming, it's a big impact. You know, village residents lose two two representatives at the at the outset, and um, mm -hmm. I, you know the annual tournament is next week. If we could start there, it's largely village um, mm -hmm. residents that go to that. Uh, not completely, but yeah. I mean, it's just a thought. I don't know. Yeah, and would you grant up? Uh, I was just gonna say. I mean, I think that. There was some, I think there, the Essex report this week or something was about, maybe it was last week, I don't know, um, about the issue. I guess I haven't changed my opinion as to whether I want to take any like particular stance on it, and I think it's kind of hard at this point. We don't have a lot of time to, before the vote um, to, to try to rally together and, and form a voice to, to, to do something, but. Um, you could. I mean, and I, I'm not saying we should do this, but you, if, if this did get approved and went down to the legislature, they would probably, they would take testimony. Yeah. And if we thought that there was something particularly egregious about it, you, we, as a board, if we felt that that, as a, if that was our official position, mm -hmm. you could go down and testify. Um, my only, I just am still trying to get my head around the, the idea that you could have a, like we just did tonight, we had to approve a budget that if we don't approve the budget tonight, it doesn't go on to a ballot. Mm -hmm. You could have a deadlocked village town 3-3 three, three thing that right. doesn't approve the budget, so it doesn't get warned and it doesn't go on to the town meeting. What happens then? Right. Well, I didn't like what Andy Watts pointed out at the second public hearing when it started. That it didn't occur to me, but the quorum would be four, and that means a whole district could meet. Without triggering a public meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's got all. And I just, I, you know, there's so many things, um, and there's so much misinformation out there, or, or unreasonable or un, uh, inaccurate uh, expectations on what it means and how quickly yeah. it goes into play. And I, it does impact village voters considerably. Mm -hmm. um, and based on what yeah. I, the inaccuracies I've heard in the comments or questions I'm getting, I just, I, I, yeah, it's, we got a month. I mean, less than a month. So um, what I would say is that um, since we can't go back and change the decision to not take a formal position, for us to really do the work to draft something that would be worthy of sharing to the public, 
would mean we'd have to wait until the February 25th meeting that we have, which would then leave seven days until the actual vote. Um, so I say that in terms of not discouraging us from having a position, but rather the five of us individually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we all know, most of us may know how we feel about that proposal. Um, and so should we go to the ADL basketball tournament or should we be talking with residents? I, I don't think that can, that can hurt in any way. <coughs> Make sure that people understand how we each feel. Though not as strong as a, the board says. No, I, I don't even think it needs to be I, I wasn't looking for a, a, a statement necessarily as much as a, you know, I think, I think we need to, mm -hmm. to get out there and I think let people know. And, and the letter that was co-authored was good. Um, a lot of people don't read it, or get, as we've heard many times, mm -hmm. the and reporter. You say that the whole thing of the misinformation. Sometimes it's misinformation, but a lot of times... With this issue and other issues that are, have come up in the last year, it's not so much misinformation, it's just lack of information or half the information, not the full thing, not all the implications of this, you know, of what, whether it's a merger, the 3-3, three, three, what have you. There are people that put information out there, but then don't tell you the whole story. Just read this, this byline here, and that's what they're selling. So they right. sell the product. You suck it up, oh, that must be it. Well, there's a whole lot more to the story. If you open the book, instead of just read the cover, look in the, the pages here in the intro, and you'll see, wow, maybe there's more to this story. I need to read a little more into it. They're, they're not given that information, and that's the issue I find. Not so much misinformation, lack of information, lack of factual information. That, that's why I always say go back to the financial direct. Go to, go, go to the people in the town, in the village offices. They'll give you it. That's right. great. I, I would only say it's it's in, at these two public hearings, it's strange the way it's been presented outside the village. It's like it's a, it, they're, they're, I think there's a, a, a real undercurrent here of, of attempting to try to turn this into a village versus town issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we keep trying to say, no, it's not that. It's, a, it's, a, it's an internal legislative, you could have a great big car crash issue mm -hmm. and then shut the police department down and shut the town budget down and we all suffer. That's what we're trying to say here, but that's that message isn't getting through. What's getting through is well, this is this is the this is a town village thing, and, and people who oppose this are the village people who oppose this, and so that's why I have a problem with us taking a, a, a formal stance with it because I don't want to fuel that that complete that mythology that's out there. That's well, that's why I agree with George. Agree, just as if anything, when it was whether it was the bond vote for the, for the town offices to be redone or the new police facility, it's not so much to say, we're saying vote this way. Mm -hmm. It's here are all the facts. This is like we're yeah. saying, like Raj says, right. that the quorum with six is four. So literally the whole group outside. Of, and for the people here in the village, they're, they realize that you're, you're paying taxes to that community outside the town, outside the village. You're not going to get to vote on those representatives that you pay taxes to. They're gonna, you're paying taxes for something that you don't represent. That's taxation without representation, as it were, okay? So there's a lot of things to look at that just are not brought up. And I think it's, you know. Well, since we're extending discussion, alternatively, you're just talking about the 3-3 three, three model. Yeah. Here's another thing. You could have three people from the village get onto the select board mm -hmm. and say, no more town budgets. Sorry, we're shutting this down for the next five years. And there's nothing the town can do about it. Now, I, has anyone thought about that? You could get three angry village residents onto the select board, and they don't approve any more town budgets. I mean, currently. Currently. Right. On on the new on this new this what would happen if you if you had three three, and three from the village, three from the town, you could get three village village. Well, residents. you couldn't do it because then you, you'd hit, you'd have obviously unless you had one of the town outside the village. No, there were there were reserved village seats, so you'd have you right. could have just a, a a continuous rotation of people three. from the village getting onto the select board. And right. saying we're not approving any more town budgets. It'd be a deadlock. Is that It'd be a deadlock. Happen? That's right. what I'm saying. Be a, deadlock, be a deadlock. Unless you had like like a a Senate deadlock is a no. Where, where if the, we were deadlocked on this budget, if if, uh, if if we didn't approve, a deadlock is a no when you're trying right. to approve a budget. So that's that's a no. Well, then you go. I mean, if you go under the rules, you you'd carry over the the past you yep. know, budget. And the, the town is under contractual right. obligations right. with right. the police and the town right. employees. Exactly. Right. Right. So right. a level funded budget is a budget that's is a is a is a declining service budget. Correct. Correct. 
I don't think people, again, we're just talking oh, about I know. No I don't. No one's about this. No one's, no one's Is that, that going to happen? No. Could it happen? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's probably why the legislature, you know, we're, we're thinking about corporations, uh, Facebook, it, yes, but they have their own internal rules about passing budgets. And if, if poor Facebook doesn't approve a new product over a quarter, well, then they just won't make as many billions of dollars that quarter. But mm -hmm. a municipal, municipal governments have to follow the statutory process for warning budgets. It could just have a big, gigantic problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah. That was fun. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to lecture. <laughs> oh, thank you. Any other comments? We have no executive session. That's the end of the reading file. Would someone like to make motion a motion? Second. Oh, wow. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, signify. Aye. 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 Aye